Hello, welcome and good evening. This is the second part about the A12B LED style panels. Second part because like I think roughly one year ago at the very start of the channel I showed you this one here, this panel and how to drive it from the Raspberry Pi. A um, couple of things happened since then someone mentioned uh, if I could show maybe how to attach more than one of these displays and uh, yeah that's actually possible because here on the back side we have two pin headers one for the input um, where the Raspberry Pi is attached and then there's an output as well for the ground the um, positive voltage and the data pin and uh, similar things can be found on other panels like this one here, which I equipped with these headers here. They are slightly different. Um, these ones here are more or less uh, horizontally attached and these are vertically or orthogonal. Um, yeah, whatever floats your boat. I picked this because it was basically the cheapest one I could get on eBay and I had to supply my own header. But otherwise they are pretty similar. They use the same LED, slightly different variant, I would say, because as you can see in the middle of the LEDs, there's uh, there are tiny little black chips here, which are sort of not really visible here. So I guess this is a bit covered here in this version of the LED. Um, but they're basically the same, they're compatible. And I will link to the original video um, down below in the description and as well as at the end of the video. And um, yeah, we will just uh, need a few jumper cables and we won't need anything else. Before in the last video, I think I wrongly said that we need um, a level shifter, this kind of bi-directional bus, which converts from five volts to three volts. Um, this is not necessary here. Because the Pi uses 5 volts, these things use 5 volts and that's all fine. There are maybe panels out there that use 3 volts, but I looked up the datasheet for the WS2812 and it says it runs from about 3.5 to 5 volts. So that's, or 5 point something volts. So that's very much what the Raspberry supplies. There are also maybe small microcontrollers which only supply 3 volts so then you would need the level shifter and another power supply but this should work I'm also using a beefy 3 amps um, like a 5 volts power supply so that's ample for these three devices so let's um, get the Raspberry Pi pin out and what we need here is the 5 volt the ground and the PWM0 GPIO pin 18, which we already used for stuff like the um, piezo buzzer and last time around as well, because the pulse width output can drive all these things and it's hardware controlled, so there's no jitter or stuff. So that's pretty nice. So uh, let's wire this thing up. Um, let's pick orange for the plus five and a nice gray for the ground. To always double check uh, your connections, right? Data pin will be this nice white one. So these are the pins that I'm using. So pin from the left, pin number two is plus five, then ground, then two blanks, and then is the PWM. Uh, let's double check. 5 volt ground and PWM. Yeah, that seems to be fine. Then we go in here on the um, on this side here, plus 5 goes to the V plus. On this one here, um, the next one was ground, which is V minus. So if there's no ground labeled, you go for the minus. And then with the in which is basically the data pin, and it goes here. Okay, that's fine. Then, yeah, uh, I already tested this, and when I used this, 
I was thinking, yeah, okay. One header here is called in, data in, and here it actually says ground. And the other one is called out. But I think they swapped that. When I attached to in, nothing happened. When I attached something to out, it was just fine. So I think they just put garbage here. So um, let's try this as well. Uh, what did we pick here? So data is white. Let's continue this. And ground is gray. And then the color is the positive lead. So we will put this to the out. Weird enough. So color is plus five. Data. All right, um, let's put them here and I'll power on the Pi. And the first thing you will notice is <laughs> that this one here is pretty bright. I'll turn it a little bit away and this one here doesn't do anything. But don't worry, this seems to be something with the, um, yeah, uh, the, the way the new LEDs here with this new variant works. And also you can still see here one of my LEDs like last year is broken. It's a bit bit purple, magenta, and this whole thing gets pretty hot. Um because it's putting out a lot of light. Really a lot of light. And yeah, I will fire up a program. The Pi should have come up by now. Give me a second to connect to it. Yes. This is much nicer. You can't see much, so I'll turn off the light. And now you see, there's our plasma effect that we had in the first video. And it works pretty nicely. You can put them together. I don't know which way around to put that, but uh, there's a way to figure that out. I have um, stopped the demo and I actually... I'll also walk you through that in a minute. Play a test pattern which shows you which way to turn those things, right? So um, basically I turn on the test pattern instead. Paint an animated line which allows you to orient this thing. Okay, you see, it goes from left to right and should work like this. In, if you use it like this, you can actually build a large display of these things. And yeah, so this works. Um, I would say we have a look at what this whole thing looks like in code. And afterwards you can build your own display containing two or even more of these things. Okay, so this is the code. The, the link will of course be in the video description. Um, I will probably just commit a new version of the gist of the old one so you can change the parameters and yeah it's actually it's actually really simple it's a very small change so um, let's recap what we did last time um, most important thing is we have this new pixel library for the WS281B and I will also put a link into, to my blog where I described how to install it. We won't go through that again. It's a couple of commands on the Raspberry Pi. It takes like less than five minutes. And you have a library to drive these things. And the change that we do is actually first to change the number of um, LEDs that we have. Oops. Um, so before it was 64, 8 by 8 now we have two panels, so obviously we want to drive 128 LEDs. Well, and that's already it for this part. Um, I also turned down the brightness a little bit to 128, so that I don't uh, swamp out the camera. But that hasn't to do anything with that. Um, I didn't change the plasma function, which actually draws the colorful image. I introduced a new function bar, which displays the test stripe. 
and um, that's actually pretty simple. First we make a black picture the same way we did for the plasma. Then um, I create here the um, depending on the time step, which is a float, um, uh, the vertical bar by setting the Y coordinate modulo the height of the display because although it went from left to right, actually um, it went from top to bottom. Actually we're drawing horizontal lines and then we basically just for the whole width of the display we set this thing to 10 basically which gives us a sort of bright white um, yeah, and then return the picture. This will give us the test picture. The plasma function as I said didn't change at all. The only other thing that we need to change, and that's really really nice, is that we change um, here in the rendering loop where we draw the picture. We change the size of the display. It was before 8x8 eight eight, and now it's 8x16. And that's it. Um, this will set up a bigger picture and we also already know that we need to drive 128 LEDs and um, yeah this will draw the plasma just like that and if you want to see the test picture just comment out the plasma and switch it to the bar display other than that I uh, decreased the sleep here a little bit uh, increased the sleep here a bit before we had one millisecond now we have 10 milliseconds which is I think better because this will still give us at most 100 frames per second on this display and the little pi zero will still be like clocked at 80% CPU or something so um, the delay before was way too short and absolutely not necessary yeah um, so not much to it uh, you can actually add more displays obviously if you want to not daisy chain them but make like uh, a 2x2 two two display of four panels you need to um, change the set pixel routines obviously a bit because you could specify 8x64 to make a long, longer strip but if you want to do 16x16 um, 16 16, for example then you need to take into account um, that the pixel addressing is slightly different, right? Um, you need to calculate am I in the first 128 pixels or the second 128 pixels and depending on that uh, calculate your coordinates a little bit differently instead of using um, this formula up here, right? But uh, we will save that for another day I also have another nice idea what to do with these two panels and I will try to prepare another video about this in the coming weeks. Um, but for today, today I think that's it. I hope you can order another one of these panels and have fun daisy chaining them. Make long strips and see how much you can get out of 3 amps of power. At some point it will break down because the um, Pi will not be able to supply more power or the power supply will give up. But I guess you will notice. Other than that, please share, like and most important of all, subscribe. Thanks for watching and have a nice evening.